All right, uh, good evening, guys. Obviously, I'm not Gene Kim. I'm not tall enough to be him. So uh, just praise the Lord for being here. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the names of God. Now, if you, go, if you have a Ruckman reference, it's the first appendix um, in that, I think it's the first. And it's, it's the study of the Hebrew names in the Old Testament of God. And obviously, I don't speak Hebrew. I don't know how to read Hebrew. And matter of fact, the King James Bible improves on the Hebrew. So we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the names of God itself. Now, it's an interesting study in itself. Uh, it took me a long time. I got it from a couple sources as well. Um, so bear with me again if, you guys, if there's any scholars online. Uh, I hope you guys get a blessing out of it. I hope you guys uh, just have some chari charity with me as well. Let me go ahead and pray real quick. Uh, God, my Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, just for being our friend, Lord God. And thank you for being our King and our Master. Thank you for saving us from hell. Thank you for uh, bringing us here today, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I pray, please, I'm nothing but a broken vessel, Lord. And I just pray, Jesus Christ, you'd use me, Father. I pray you'd fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that everyone here would get something out of your word today. Anyone here that's not saved, I pray they may get saved. I pray, Jesus Christ, today, Lord God, you use this lesson, Father, to edify us, Lord, to, uh, to be more specific in prayers, Lord, to be more specific in, in thanking you, for not just for what you do, Father, but who you are, Lord God, and have us to grow in, in, in the knowledge of God, Father, so that we can uh, even repent even more, have a closer walk with you, Father, and, and really just have a closer a relationship with you, Lord God, and, and really know who our Father is, Lord. It's, it's a blessing, Father, to, to know that you're our God, and it's another blessing, Father, to, to know what your word says about you. And I just pray, Father, you'd use it. I pray, Jesus Christ, you'd get the glory. Put me behind the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So then, um, <clears throat> okay, so let me go start off here again. So um, I don't know any Hebrew, and we're going to go off the word of God about what the word of God says um, and now, obviously, this is a study on the names of God. I don't know if you can see that right there, but don't worry about it. Uh, the first thing is, is that um, what's more important about the names of God or the name of God itself is his word, right? Psalms 12, 6 and 7 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Psalms 138, verse 2, don't write it, don't turn there. It says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified all thy word above all thy name. So we're going to go based off the book itself. I mean, it's one thing to know the names of God, but it's another thing to know about the words of, 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 the, of, of the Bible that talk about his names. And that's where we're going to get the understanding is through his word. So we're going to use the book to be the final authority, obviously, right? Amen. Not the Hebrew, not the lexicons, but the word King James English Bible. Amen. Amen. So the first name, uh, by the way, some of the goals that I, uh, um, I hope you guys get, the reason why this study is really good is that these names, the study of these names, obviously could be first to, it could be used to debunk some religions, some false heresies, some, uh, just some false doctrines, right? The second thing is it'll really help you to grow an understanding of, of who God is, right? Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to, de and to desire that ye may, might be filled with the knowledge of, of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. Right? And the last thing that uh, this, this study will help you with is to thank God with open eyes for who he is and his power. Right? So uh, the first name I want to talk about, I'll, I'll write the Hebrew names. And again, don't worry about... Um, the Hebrew names itself, I mean, you'll, it's, it's interesting. You talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, and all they want to focus on is Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Well, guess what? Jehovah's not his only name. Jesus Christ, or God, is he, he is the rock. He is your shield. He is your buckler. Not only that, his name is Jealous as well. So it's not all about the name of Jehovah itself, but it is important to know. So the first name I want to talk about is uh, the, he's the creator. Now, it's, in the Hebrew, it's Elohim, Elohim. I um, mean, if you guys want to, you guys can do your own study on these names, you know, but it's really interesting. So the, uh, go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. You guys should know this by now, but if not, this is where you, you guys get the, the name of the creator, right? I'll just go ahead and read it. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, what's interesting about Elohim is that this is more specifically tied, yes, to the creator. But who is the creator? It's Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ. Now, this is a study on the names of God, but you'll notice here that God is Jesus Christ, obviously. So let's go ahead and look at it. Let's have the Bible be the final say on it, right? Or the, the final authority. Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and Colossians. John chapter 1 and Colossians 1. It's going to be a lot of verses. I didn't have time to write all of them, so if you guys really want to know, you'll take some notes. Amen. Uh, John chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1. I'll try to read slow, but go fast, okay? John chapter 1, and it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if you guys have a modern version, they take this verse out, they mess it up, right? Uh, verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Who is the word, right? Verse 14, and the word was made flesh. When was the word ever made flesh? Huh, maybe his name was Jesus Christ, okay. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right, now go to Colossians chapter 1. I just lost my place. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. And it says, so this is the context of who is talking about. Who hath, verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us un, into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay, what's interesting about his son, well, verse 16, it says, for by him who Jesus Christ were all things created. Hmm, I thought in Genesis 1, 1, the Bible says in the beginning, God created. Okay, well, whatever. Let's see. Um, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Talking about Jesus Christ. Elohim, God is... And now, yeah, Jesus Christ is God, right? What an amazing thing just to know about the names of God will tell you who Jesus Christ is. All right, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, don't turn there. It says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Actually, go ahead and turn there really quick. So when I first... You know, when you, you, you read the Bible and you see some things, obviously there's a bunch of different heresy and all that stuff and confusion. And you, one of the arguments here is a Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And they will use this first to show that, see, he was a created being. He was the beginning of creation. No. What that verse is saying, simply, uh, look at the last part of verse 14, right? It says, uh, the beginning of the creation of God. People say that, oh, you see that Jesus Christ, he was the first creation ever. No, the, what it's saying is that he, was, he began creation. He created the first things. Go to Genesis 1. It talks about all the first things that were made. That's the beginning of the creation. He's the, he is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the beginning, and he's the beginning and the end. Amen. Right? What does uh, Dr. Ruckman say? Nothing like a, a King James uh, thing to overcome some scholarly education, whatever, whatever, or college education, amen, amen, all right, so that's the first name, now the second name I want to talk about, I have eight names here, so bear with me, okay, it's, it's Jehovah, okay, if you guys have any uh, JW friends, this is a great study to really help them understand who Jehovah is, they're going to talk about Jehovah, 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 but really, if you go through all of these, it will tell you who Jehovah is, and you, will, you cannot deny that Jehovah is God and Jehovah is Jesus Christ. You cannot deny it. You cannot deny it just going through this, just through this name itself. All right? So uh, Jehovah, it, so what it means, it's, it's uh, in, covenant relation to his, uh, in covenant relation to his creation. Right? So we're not uh, deists. We don't believe that uh, God just made everything and lets everything go. We're not that. God is a God that is involved in your life. He is the stranger of Galilee that walked with you and came down to you when you didn't even know him, a stranger that cared for you. I mean, man, what an amazing God. Amen. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33. Genesis chapter 31, <clears throat> verse 33. Now you'll notice in green, uh, Jehovah, there's, uh, these are the different, oh, let me go over here. These are the different uh, covenants of relation to his creation. The first one I want to look at is, is, is Jehovah. He is the, 
He is the everlasting God. Jehovah, the everlasting God. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33. And it says, And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Now, what Jehovah means, it means the eternal, the immutable one. He who was and is and is to come. The everlasting God. Everlasting. Hmm. Isn't Jesus Christ the everlasting Father? Go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. What a great verse to memorize. And by the way, this is uh, the same. It says the same thing, I believe, in the New World Testament. So if you want to talk to some J-dubs, go ahead and use this verse. But obviously they'll, they'll twist it around and do all these things and, and try to bring some confusion to your eyes. And really, it's not confusing at all. It's real simple. It's real simple. I, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Right? The ever, Jehovah, the everlasting Father. Well, uh, Jesus Christ is the everlasting Father, believe it or not. It says, uh, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's Jesus Christ right there. I mean, one verse can bunk a whole bunch of stuff, but if that one verse w won't get you, maybe get, keep reading. Keep reading. How about this? Um, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. Don't turn there, but it says, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. All right, go to Revelation chapter 1. Go to Revelation chapter 1, another proof text that Jesus Christ is everlasting too, and he is the everlasting Father. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, and we'll turn here. Uh, verse 8, it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and wa which was and which is to come. Isn't that the definition of Jehovah itself? Okay, the Almighty, right? Who is that talking about? Verse 17, verse 17, it's talking about Jesus Christ. And it says, and I, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive evermore. Wait a minute. Who died? When did God ever die? That was Jesus Christ. That was Jesus Christ. Amen. He lived and died and lived evermore. Everlasting. Amen. All right? Amen. The second name of uh, Jehovah is, is, is God will provide. God will pro and, and by the way, when you're going through these names... I, I really hope you'll, you'll, you'll remember these names and, and really grow to understand who you're praying to. You know, you, whenever you, you pray to the Lord, you're like, yeah, dear Lord, uh, dear Father, holy God, and all that stuff. But who, you have to know who, you're, who this God is. And by the way, it's, all these names are just one. All, all, these are all different names for the same God, by the way. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. God will provide. And by the way, you'll see Jehovah in there a couple times. Jehovah, all right? Uh, Genesis chapter 22, <clears throat> verse 8. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8, talking about when Isaac offered up, uh, Abraham offered up Isaac for a sacrifice, right? What a beautiful picture of uh, Jesus Christ, God the Father, sending down his only begotten son, right? Uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, and it says, And Abraham said, My son... God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them together. You know what that means? He says he's going to provide himself to be the lamb for us. Hmm, isn't Jesus Christ the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world? Okay, interesting. Go to verse 14. And it says, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. I'll just say it like that. I don't speak Hebrew, okay? I'm sorry. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. What was seen? You know what was seen? I mean, if you go to Hebrews, it talks of Abraham uh, glorying to see his day. What was seen at that day is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ being offered up for our sins. What an amazing thing that was seen that day. God will provide. And what's interesting, if you have a Ruckman reference, you could actually study it. And it's, this is the very place 
Uh, Mount Zion, I think it's what it is. It's, it's either the place of the crucifixion or the place that saw it. Uh, it was the place of the crucifixion. It was the place of the temple. And it was the place where Jesus Christ will reign one day. If you ever study that very place, it was in Moriah. Amen. Uh, I'm going to keep going fast. I'm sorry about that. The third name is uh, the Lord that healeth thee. Go to Exodus 15. Exodus 15. Exodus 15. Hey, praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 15. Now, Jehovah, he heals thee, right? Exodus 15, chapter, uh, chapter, 15, chapter 15, verse 26. And it says, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, bless you, um, <clears throat> I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's Jehovah, that's God. In covenant relation to his creation, he's a God that heals you. Now what's interesting about um, who Jehovah is, Jehovah heals thee. Wait, isn't that the same thing about Isaiah 53? Talking about, uh, it says here, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. We're healed. Amen. Amen. Now, actually, go to verse 25 of Exodus. I know, I know you didn't turn to Isaiah 53. Go to uh, Exodus 15 and verse uh, 25. For those who are interested in Ruth, um, it, it, it uses the same name of the waters that Naomi used in Ruth. Right? Uh, Exodus chapter, look at verse 23. And it says, And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. In Ruth 1.20, you can just take the note. Um, Naomi says, Don't call me Naomi, call me Marah, for the Lord hath dealt with me bitterly. Something like that, right? That's what's interesting. That's the, that's the same Hebrew, right? Oh, but forget about the Hebrew. It's English. English King James. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 24, and it says, And the people murmured, right? So the, the children of Israel, they, they, they left Egypt, and they go to this, these waters, but they can't drink it. They call it Marah because it's bitter. Now, this is what the Lord showed me. It's, it's so amazing. Look at this. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Okay, the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for, the, uh, for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Right Now, look at this picture. Now, the Bible says, Cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. Okay? This is a tree right here. Now, in Exodus 15, this very tree is thrown into the waters. Do you guys see the picture? You know, what is, what is baptism a picture of? The death and burial. This is a picture of the death and burial of, the, of Jesus Christ right here in Exodus. Good, Isn't that interesting? Good. Isn't that interesting right there? Jehovah, the Father. Amen. I just thought that was real interesting. I wanted to throw that in there. All right. Now, the next name is the Lord, our banner. Go to Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Now, you'll see the name here is Jehovah Nisi. Uh, Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. And it says here, And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation, right? Now what's interesting is that he is the banner. What was going on here is that Josiah was fighting against uh, Amalek, I believe, right? Yeah, he was fighting against Amalek, and, and in the back, here's another picture. Here's another picture What's so crazy. You'll see Moses right here, and I can't draw as good as Pastor, but here's kneeling down right here, whatever. He's like in sumo squat, whatever. But then he has his hands up. He has, his, he has these hands up, and there's people that are uh, beside him holding his hands, right? There's people beside him holding up the, uh, the hands of Moses because when every single time Moses is, <laughs> don't worry about the legs. Um, every time Moses' hands were put down, Josiah and the, 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 the Jews were, they were, um, they were losing. So every single, they had to keep the hands up. They had to keep the hands up, right? Um, here, let me, where am I right here? Verse 12. 
And it says, But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. Now look, pay attention to the words. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. If you look up the phrase of the going down of the sun, it's still death. It's till death. You know what this is a picture of? This is a picture of, I'll draw right here. I'm sorry, I'm, getting, I'm just getting so excited. It's so fun. It's, it's a picture of the cross right here. You know why? Because in, uh, in Matthew 27, verse 38, you'll notice that there was, people, uh, there was people that were crucified on the right side, on the right hand, and on the left hand. Matthew 27, verse 38, it says, Then were there two thieves crucified with him on the right hand and on the left hand right there. You know why? Because... With those hands up, you get salvation right there. Amen. You get salvation right there. What an amazing God. What an amazing God you're praying to. Man, praise the Lord. Ooh, this thing's going to fall. Amen. Amen. Now you'll notice here what's interesting. It's what is so special about the arms of God? What's so special? Go to Isaiah 51 really quick. Go to Isaiah 51. Now, I want to tell you right now, I'm not talking about Moses' arms. I'm talking about the arms that were hanging on the cross. If those arms went down, we would have went down too. But guess what? He held them up till death, until the, the going down of the sun right there. Isaiah 51, and those same exact arms at the second advent, those are going to be the same arms that are going to lead the way yeah. to victory. Oh. Amen. Isaiah 51, verse 5, it says, My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arms shall jump. Judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and mine arm shall they trust. It's an arm of trust. It's an arm of salvation. It's an arm of judgment. Amen. Amen. Up, Let's keep going. Uh, the next name of Jehovah is uh, the Lord doth sanctify me. By the way, uh, the Lord, our banner. I mean, you think about what is a banner? A banner is something that you hang up. It's just something that represents who you are. It's just something that's, it's, it's a banner is something that leads you to victory. Yeah. And that banner still stands. Amen? Amen. That banner still stands. Amen. Now, the Lord doth sanctify. We'll just go to one verse. Um, you can write these verses, other verses down. I'll tell you. You can rewind whatever. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. Let me just calm down real quick. Man, this is so fun. Come on, brother. Good. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. And it says here, verse 12, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you, Tell that to a Seventh-day Adventist. It's a sign to the Jews, between the Jews and God. Anyways, verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. God is the one that will sanctify you. Sanctification is the one thing that will help God. It'll, this, I was thinking about this too. What's interesting is that in our, in our Christian life, God is too busy cleaning out cleaning out uh, the filth in our hearts. But what's interesting is if you let, the, if, if you let, God, um, if you let God be the one to sanctify you and you, you clean the things that you need to clean out yourself, there will be less time of God rum, uh, uh, going through all the rubbish and there will be more time of Him sanctifying you and you glorifying Him. Amen. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way, Christian. Go ahead and write these other verses down. It, says, it basically says the same thing about who the Lord is. Leviticus 20, verse 8. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 8. Leviticus 21, verse 8. Uh, Leviticus chapter 22, verse 32. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 32. And Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. He is the Lord that doth sanctify you. Now go to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Judges chapter 6 and verse 23. <clears throat> Judges chapter 6 and verse 23. The next name, um, I'll just write it here. It's uh, Jehovah Shalom. Zoom in if you can't see it. I'm sorry. Jehovah Shalom. And it's Jehovah sends peace. Yeah. 
Jehovah sends peace. I mean, or, or it's Jehovah of peace, Jehovah is peace, Jehovah sends peace. But here, um, what happens is, is, is in the story of Gideon, you know, uh, Gideon, he's uh, told by God that you're going to be the one to, to, to be a judge in Israel and, and uh, just redeem the people that have turned my, uh, their back on God. And what happens is uh, Jehovah's worried. He's, he's a young kid. He's just a little shepherd boy. He's, he's someone that, that feels that he has no certain gifts. He feels that, he, that, that uh, he's not special in the church. But guess what? God's, he, God uses those people. God uses the people that, that think they're nothing in the church. They don't, uh, um, they don't really, they're not a real blessing. But guess what? If you, if you don't speak a lot, if you don't talk to a lot of people, God, you're the right person that God will use. So don't underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate uh, how low you are. Because, I mean, guess what? I mean, if, if you think about it, you know, it's, people may think, oh, you got to be a preacher, you got to have a, uh, the gift of gab and all that stuff. But guess what? If, if you're quiet all the time, that's actually a blessing because the Bible says, um, be still and know that I am God. Amen. If you're not quiet, you can't be still. Amen. So that's, that's a real blessing right there. But anyways, uh, Job, uh, Job, uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 23, and it says, And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built, uh, built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abiezrites. Right? So the God you're praying to, he's also uh, Jehovah sends peace. And guess what? God will send peace in your life. God will send peace in your life. Amen. Now, the next name of Jehovah is... The Lord of Hosts. Now, this one was really interesting. I've always wondered, what, what, are, what are the hosts? What are these hosts? Let's get some definitions in here. He is the Lord of Hosts. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3. That's the first mention of, of um, the Lord of Hosts. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3. And it's when um, Eli is introduced, Elkanah is introduced, and you'll see, you'll, you'll see uh, Hannah here. Um, we'll go and read verse 1. Oh, yeah. 1 verse 3, I'm sorry. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3. And it says, Now there was a certain man of... Okay, never mind. I'm just going to go to... Okay. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth Aim Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram, uh, the son of Elihu, the son of Tehu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Pen... Penina, and Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts. Right? So you'll notice here the Lord of hosts. But let me give you some definitions. Why is it important that the, uh, we know that God is the Lord of hosts? Uh, go, to, go to Psalms chapter 47. What does that mean? Who are these hosts? The Lord of hosts. Okay, well. Here's some definitions. If, if maybe this will just uh, plant some seeds, you could find something even more clear and better. Psalm chapter 47 and verse 7. This may give you some insight of what the Lord of hosts means. 47 verse, uh, Psalms 47 verse 7 and 8. And it says, For God is the king of what? All the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. God is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of everybody. Of everybody. The hosts of, uh, of, of China, of Korea, of Mexico, of America. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. Right? Uh, go to Joshua. What's it? Yeah. Joshua 3.11 and Zechariah 7. Uh, Zechariah 6. Joshua 3.11 I just thought it was really interesting. I've, I've always wondered what the Lord of hosts is, and it's kind of interesting to find some, some things that uh, the Bible always will clear up, by the way. The Bible will always clear these up. Joshua chapter 3 and Zechariah. Zechariah. Yeah. Zechariah 6. Here's just some definitions for, for you Bible believers. <clears throat> Joshua 3, verse 11, and it says, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the who? The Lord of all the earth. That's the Lord of hosts right there. Passeth over you be, uh, before you into Jordan. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 5, and it says, And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth 
from standing before who? The Lord of all the earth, the Lord of hosts right there. When you're praying to God, you're not just praying to a God. You're not just praying to, to, to the Christian God. You're praying to the God of all the people, good, of the believers and the unbelievers. Amen? That's good. Now, another name of Jehovah is the Lord of Righteousness. Go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Got a lot of time. Jeremiah chapter 23. Now, if you go in, um, I, I didn't bring that Bible, but if you go in Bollinger's, um, in his Bible, he gives you this study. Dr. Ruckman recommends it because of his appendices. Obviously, he's a scholar, so don't, he, he's not the final authority, but there's some good stuff in there. Uh, Jeremiah 23 and 33. Jeremiah chapter 23 and chapter 33. He is the Lord of our righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 5. And it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Branch, branch, branch. Where did I see that? John 10? Okay. Yeah. That's Jesus Christ right there. I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in, all, in the earth. In his days of, uh, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord of our righteousness. And then, it, you, don't, you don't have to turn there, but uh, Jeremiah thirty three sixteen you'll find that Jerusalem is called after the Lord of Righteousness. The name of Jerusalem is called the Lord of Righteousness. Oh, interesting. Yeah, amen. Now, another thing about Jehovah, there's a lot, of, there's a lot here I know, but it's, it's just so good. It's just so good. The next one is that the Lord is there. Ezekiel 48, verse 35. Don't turn there. But if you guys go to this verse, it talks, it's, it's doctrinally applicable to a New Jerusalem. And what you'll find there is that the Lord is there. Now, whenever you're praying to God, you're not praying to a God that's just up in heaven. You're praying to a God that's omnipresent, and He's right there in your heart. He's sitting next to you. He's over there. He, he hears all of it, and He is there. He, the Lord is there. Let's go over there. I, I could be lying to you. I don't know. Go to Ezekiel. Let the Bible tell you what it means. Ezekiel chapter uh, 48 and verse 35. And it says, it was round about 18,000 measures. I'll just go ahead and read it. And the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. Now, we, what's interesting about it is that it's New Jerusalem. And this New Jerusalem is for the Christians. And what's interesting about that is that if the Christians are there, that means the Lord is there. Amen, right? Amen. But how are you there unless you're in Jesus Christ? Well, okay, the Lord is there. Amen. And the last one about Jehovah you'll find is that God is my shepherd. Psalms 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, hmm, Jehovah, Jehovah the Father. Who else is the shepherd? Yeah. Who else is the good shepherd? Maybe Jesus Christ? Yeah. I believe it's Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 and verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Amen. God himself, uh, God will provide himself a lamb. Amen. I actually skipped one, the most high. The, he's also the most high as well. We'll, we'll uh, just go ahead and write this down. Psalms 47 verses, uh, let's go over there. Psalms 47 verse 1 and 2. Psalms 47 verse 1 and 2. Psalms 47. Verses 1 and 2, it says, O oh, clap your hands, and all ye people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Amen. He is the Most High, Jehovah the Most High. Now, obviously, remember, what is Jehovah in terms of? It is in, relation, it is in covenant relation to His creation. When you're talking to God, He is involved in... And he, the way he is involved, he is involved in specific manners. Isn't that amazing? He is specifically in tune in your life. Praise the Lord. He is leading you as a shepherd. He is the most high of all your thoughts. He is with thee. He is your righteousness. He is the Lord of all the people that you think are talking bad about you. He sends peace. 
He sanctifies you. He is the banner for you to follow. He provides, and surely Amen. enough, He is everlasting. Amen? Amen. Now, the next name of God, it is, He is our salvation. Go to Exodus 15. Exodus chapter 15. The next name of God, here I'll write the, the, the Hebrew, it's Jah. I mean, maybe it's Yah. I don't, I, I don't think there's a... Yeah, I don't think there's a J pronunciation in Hebrew, but let's just say Yah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> now, Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. Now, you'll find here that He is our, our salvation, but let's look how He is our salvation, right? Um, Exodus 15, verse 2, it says, The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him in habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. Now, how is the Lord our salvation? Which, by the way, this is a really great proof. Of it because it's not your salvation to lose. It's his. If God is everlasting, so is your salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, now what's interesting about our salvation, what you'll find here is that he is our salvation through victory and triumph over the enemy. You know, find it in the same chapter. Look at verse 3, verse 1, and it says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Verse 3, he is, uh, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He is a man of war. Oh, God is love. Now he will destroy the enemy. And righteously so. Which, by the way, was us. When we were lost, praise, right? Verse 6. Uh, we'll keep reading. Verse 4. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Now, go to verse 16. Um, actually, go to, go to Psalm 77. You'll notice that God is our salvation through victory. Psalm 77, verse 10 and 15. By the way, this is all Old Testament. So if you ever deal with a, what is it, a, a hyper-dispensationalist, how are you going to know who you're praying to if you don't go to the Old Testament? Amen. Psalm chapter, er, Psalm chapter 77, verse 10. He is our uh, salvation through victory. 77, Psalm 77, verse 10 and 15. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also in all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people. The sons of Jacob and Joseph saw the water saw thee, O God. The water saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. That is the victory that God has to offer. And it's, he's coming again. He's going to have the victory over the earth. Don't worry about it. Psalm chapter 89. I just want to keep, I mean, man, these verses are so amazing. He is our God through victory. He is our God through triumph. Psalm chapter 89 and verse 9, it says, Psalm chapter 89 and verse 9, Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof arise. Hmm, thou stillest them. Oh, okay. Okay, God the Father stills some raging waters. I'm not talking about the amusement park, by the way. I'm talking about some raging storms. Amen. Who else, Ray? Who else uh, calmed some seas? Maybe Jesus Christ, peace be still, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Our salvation. Our salvation. How about that? Uh, verse 9 already read, right? Verse 13 talks about the triumph. And thou hast a mighty arm. Interesting thing about the, the Lord's arm. Strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Who is at the right hand of God, by the way? Oh, amen. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. 
Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. That's where the song comes, by the way. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Man, praise the Lord. Not only that, let's look at the triumph from Revelation chapter 19. Oh, man. Amen. Amen. All this stuff just to lead to the end, man. Beginning and the end. Amen. Revelation chapter 19. You'll find the four hallelujahs. Now, what's interesting about that, remember, our salvation, uh, his name is Jah, right? Now, in the English, we spell hallelujah like this. Oh, look at this transliteration right there. There's God right there. But in the, uh, in, in the King James, it's spelled differently, right? But here, let's look at the triumph, the four hallelujahs, the hallelujahs, right? Uh, Revelation 19, verse 1, and it says, After these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Amen. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, praise the Lord, uh, which, doth, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said what? Alleluia. Ah, our salvation. Ah, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, verse 3, and again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four uh, and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God and sat on the throne saying, Amen, our salvation, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God and, he, and all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of the great multitude and, and, and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Amen. That's your salvation right there. That's the salvation of his covenant in the beginning, which he's going to fulfill in the end. The beginning and the end. Oh, that's interesting. Amen. Now, the next name. Number four. He is the omnipotent, the almighty. Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16. Now, here's the other Hebrew right here. It's L. L. Okay, we'll look into that. As we're going through this, the Omnipotent, the Almighty, think of some names that have L in it. Hmm, okay. Genesis 16, verse 13. Genesis 16 and verse 13. Now, here you'll find Hagar. And she's all alone, and God talks to her through the angel of the Lord, by the way. But he said, the angel of the Lord says, I will do this, and I will do that. And let's look at 16, verse 10. For, uh, let's get, look at verse 7, 16, verse 7. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of waters in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of, in the way of sure. Interesting. The angel of the Lord finds a Gentile woman. Doesn't Jesus Christ find a Samaritan woman or Samarian by, by a well? Oh, man, amen. I didn't even know that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, let's keep reading. Sorry, I'm traveling on a phone. Okay, verse 13. And she called the name of the Lord there uh, that spake unto her. Who spake unto her, by the way? It was the angel of the Lord. Verse 13. Um, the Lord that spake unto her, thou God seest me. The omnipotent God, he sees you. He sees you. Not only that, he hears your cry. Psalms chapter 57, verse 2, it says, I will cry unto, the, uh, unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. Amen. Man, praise the Lord. I can see a Calvinist kind of using that, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I'm sure you could use this against them as well. Amen. Now, what's interesting, remember, it's L, right? E-L. Kind of like the words, uh, maybe the name Emmanuel. Hmm. What is that translated to? God with us. Mm -hmm. Omnipotent, man. The Almighty is with us, amen? What about Bethel? Ooh, interesting. Yeah, Bethel. The house of God. Man, praise the Lord. Transliterated, of course, amen. <laughs> Now, the next name, man, praise the Lord. Okay, the next name is God, is God is the God who is to be worshipped. Now, this is one of the most important ones right here. He is to be worshipped. 
Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Now, when I was studying this, um, they mentioned that in terms of uh, the name of, uh, of God who is to be worshipped, this verse is in correlation of what shouldn't be. Of what shouldn't be. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 15. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 13, uh, 15. It says, but Jeshurun waxed fat. By the way, Jeshurun, that's another name for Israel, okay, if you guys don't know. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Yeah. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, uh, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the, of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no face. Now pay attention to verse 21. I got some interesting stuff about verse 21 right here. Verse 21, it says, They have moved me to jealousy. Remember, one of, one of his names is Jealous, right? I, 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 I was always interested about, uh, in, in the jealousy of God. Now, I'm going to show you some things about the jealousy of God. We'll keep reading verse 21, and it says, I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. All I want to say about this is that praise the Lord that God is jealous. Why? Why is it a good thing? Why, why is it good for God to be jealous? Isn't it bad to envy? All right, let's look at go to, uh, go to Romans 11, by the way. Go to Romans 11. Let's see where God's jealousy led to. Man, praise the Lord. Romans 11. They have provoked me to jealousy. This is another good reason why you shouldn't hate the Jews. Because if they didn't provoke God to jealousy, then we wouldn't have God. We wouldn't have salvation. Romans 11 and verse 11. And it says here, look at verse 10. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down, uh, bow down their back always. Remember what, God, what did God say in, uh, in Deuteronomy? That he'll turn his face. He'll turn his face, meaning his back is turned toward them, right? Verse 11. I say then... Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Okay, God chose us, or he turned to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. You know what that jealousy did? It turned the Gentiles to salvation. Amen. Look at verse, uh, verse 14. Well, let's read verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the Jews, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? We're going to look at that later. Verse 13, And for I spake to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke the emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Verse 15, For if the casting away of them... The casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Yeah. What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Okay, what does that mean, preacher? What does that mean? God made a covenant that he is not going to break. God, through their jealousy, turned to us so that they could be turned back to God. Look at verse 31. Verse 31, and it says, um, let's see, verse 28. Romans eleven twenty eight. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election. No, you Calvinists, talking about the Jews. They are beloved for the Father's sake. Look at verse 30. Uh, verse 30. For as ye in time past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also not now, uh, now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. What does that mean? Verse 32. Verse 32, I think that's where I'm going. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, verse 31, it says right here. Oh yeah, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. What does that mean? Go to 1 Peter. Let's go over there. 1 Peter. 26, 27. Oh no, actually, I'm sorry. Romans 11, what does that mean? What does that mean that be, through our mercy, they're going to be turned unto mercy? Uh, verse 26, Romans 11, 26, and 27. Sorry, I'm, I'm going on a rabbit trail, but this is where I'm going. Verse 26, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. You know what the study of the, Lord, uh, of, of the Lord's jealousy will honestly bring? If I can just find it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, the conclusion of the jealousy of God is His glory. The first thing is that its salvation is brought to the Gentile believers. The second thing of, uh, of the jealousy of God is that it brings salvation back to Israel. If Israel didn't listen before, they sure will in the end. Yeah, that's good. And the third thing here, this is the scariest one, is that everybody, including Satan, will bow the knee to God and will be glorified Amen. because of His jealousy. Now, this is this, go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. This is, this, man, this was real scary when I uh, looked into it. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Now, I believe, I believe that God will be glorified and exalted in the end. That, that, that when people are thrown in hell, or that uh, people that are in hell get thrown into the lake of fire, and they see God, and they're judged by their works, God's glory will help them realize that they deserve everlasting fire. And you know what they're going to do in that lake of fire? I, I honestly believe this. They're going to be praising the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What am I talking about? Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. They're going to be crying out to God, I deserve this. Glory to you, God. And they're going to be burning. They're going to be burning. Verse uh, uh, Philippians 2, 9 and 10. And it says, and being, f oh, uh, verse 9. Wherefore God also hath exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of, name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. They're going to be bowing. What's under the earth? Isn't it hell? Isn't hell under the earth? I don't know where the lake of fire is at, but I think it's under the, uh, under the new earth. But they're going to be crying and they're going to be bowing and they're going to be confessing, God, Jesus Christ is Lord. And they're going to be burning. Now, if you guys want to have a burn for lost souls, get this. Get this. You don't want them to be burning when they're praising the Lord. You want them to be right next to you and saying, God, you're omnipotent forever. Glory and honor and power are yours. You want them to be right here. Okay. Okay, now we're almost done. Two more, okay? Um, the next one is the Most High God. The next name is the Most High he is the Most High God. Genesis 14. Genesis 14, verses 18 to 22. I'll just go ahead and turn to this one. Okay. Genesis 14, verse 18. And it says here, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, the Most High is what? The possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Verse 21, And the king of Sodom said unto Abr Abram, Give me the persons, and take the good to thyself. And, Abraham, and Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. All right? So God, He is the Most High. He is the Most High. What is the importance of that? He possesses all things. You know, why are you depending on your own work and your own skill set when the Most High God is, He is a provider. That's the next name. He is the Most High. He's the Most High God. Don't write, just, just go ahead and write this. Numbers chapter 24, verse 16, it talks about Balaam knowing the knowledge of the Most High. Acts, 17, uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 48, it says, How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, saith the prophet. Now, what's inter what did the devil say in Isaiah 14? I will be like the Most High. Guess what, devil? 
Guess what, anointed cherub? You will never be above the Most High. Amen. You will never be above the Most High. He is the highest. You could even look up, look up the word highest. That's God. He is the highest of the high. Now here, let's look at uh, the next name. This is probably my, one of my favorites right here. Oh, there's another one right here. Okay. The next name is, he is the almighty provider, the all-sufficient one. Now, the first thing about that is that he, the almighty provider, it was, here, let me write that. Oh, I just threw the pen. Okay. So the Hebrew name for that one is Shaddai, right? Maybe I'm saying it right or wrong. I'm sorry. Now, this could be translated into these right here. The first one is the provider. Genesis chapter 28, verse 3. Chapter 28. Genesis 28 and verse 3. He is the provider. And it says, And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee. Hmm. God Almighty blesses you and provides all things. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's the provider. You go to Genesis chapter 43. Genesis 43 verse 14. Now, I know I'm going through this really fast, but if you guys really take the time and do this study, man, it'd be a huge blessing, I'm telling you. 43, verse 14, study of the show thy self approved. Amen. He is the provider. God Almighty give you mercy, right? Genesis 43 and verse 14. This is when uh, uh, Jacob's, no, no, Joseph's brothers, they don't know that he's Jake, uh, Joseph yet. But then what happens is that... Um, Joseph, <clears throat> he gives them bread, and then all of a sudden his brothers, they find money in there. And then all of a sudden they're scared, like, oh man, this guy's going to kill us. He's going to think that we stole this money. But only to find out that Joseph's the one that, that gave him the money. But look what Joseph says about that. Genesis 43, verse 14, it says, And God Almighty give you mercy before the man. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is when, uh... yeah, I'm, I'm right. 43, 14, God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your older brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Jacob says that God Almighty is the one that provided it. If you read about this story, Joseph also says the same thing. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead and study it for yourself. I told you the Bible's the final authority. Genesis 49, Genesis 49 uh, talks about when Jacob, I believe, is blessing the children of Joseph. And Genesis 49, verse 25, it says, Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. God is the provider. God is the provider. And he supplies all your need. Amen. Not only that, Shaddai can also be translated into a, a wonderful, wonderful, telling you, man, go, go read those appendixes or appendices in Dr. Ruckman's book, man. What a blessing it is that a man labored in the word for you. It's uh, Shaddai can be translated into a, a wonder or wonderful. We already looked at the verse, Isaiah 9, 6. Uh, one of his names shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14, it says, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. Not only that, then another thing to be translated into, thank you for your grace, by the way. Uh, it's it's uh, difficult or hidden. Now, this was really interesting that I thought I kind of want to share with you. Uh, go ahead and write down Genesis 18 and four, uh, verse 14. Genesis 18, 14. And Judges 13, verses 15 to 20. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. And Judges chapter 13 and verse 15. Now you'll notice in both of these verses, remember, he is difficult. He is hidden. In Genesis 18, you'll find that Sarah, being old of age, being barren, ends up with child. It's difficult to understand. Some hidden things right there about our God. In, in Judges chapter 13, you'll find that uh, Samson's mother, Manoah's wife, being barren ends up bearing Samson himself. Man, the wonders of God. The wonders of God. 
Man, you'll just listen to the, read the testimonies of people who, who had no hope, and guess what? They were healed of cancer. They were made, uh, they were, they're, 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 their womb was opened by God, even now, even now. What a wonder. Those are difficult things. Amen. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts and your thoughts. Are you struggling with something that you just cannot understand? Guess what? God is the one that understands the difficult things. Where's your faith, Christian? Romans 11.33 says, How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. This is the last name I want to go over. Thank you so much for your grace. I know it's been, uh, it's, it's been fun. <laughs> the next one is the Lord who carries his purposes of blessing in the earth. What did Boaz say to Ruth? Uh, he dropped some handfuls of purpose, right? Drop some handfuls of purpose. I'll just go ahead and go over this one. Uh, just write these down. Genesis 43. Genesis 43, verses 20 to 23, uh, Adonai. This is, the, this is the Hebrew, Adonai. He carries his purposes of blessing in the earth. In Genesis chapter 43, verse 20 to 23, uh, he is mentioned as sir. He is a sir with authority. Verse 23, it says, And he said, Peace be to you, fear not, your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in, you, in your sacks. I had your money and he brought Simeon out of, unto them. That was, that was the one I was talking about. Joseph uh, gives money into his brother's sacks of food, and they find it, they think it's Joseph, and Joseph gives God the glory. Adonai, Adonai provides, sir. Right? Another one is, uh, just go ahead and write this down. First, first King 16, verse 24. 1 Kings 16, 24. Uh, Adonai is also translated as owner. He is an owner. Now go to Deuteronomy 10, 17 really quick. This one was really good. Deuteronomy 10, 17. And I'm telling you, man, this is just barely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the name of God and who He is. But man, what a blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. Adonai, He is the master of masters. Amen, he is the master of masters. You got a master's degree? God is the master of masters. Amen. Amen. Come on. Deuteronomy 10, 17. It says, For the Lord your God is God of gods. Are you guys there? I want you to read it. The, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. Who is Jesus Christ? Revelation chapter 19. Jesus Christ, he's the word of God. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. A master of masters. Now Psalm chapter, one, verse, uh, ch Psalm chapter 110 verse 1 it's a famous verse. Is uh, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies uh, thy footstool. You know who he's talking to? God the Father is talking to Jesus Christ, calling him Lord. Jesus Christ is the master of masters. And then just go ahead and write the, the cross reference Matthew 22, verse uh, 42 to 46. God calls Christ the Son of David Lord. God calls Christ Lord. Also in Hebrews chapter 1. God the Father calls Jesus Christ God. <laughs> Amen. If you read um, the Master of Masters, if you read Job chapter 38 uh, to chapter 41, the Master asks Job for his qualifications. You know, throughout the whole book, Job's like, oh, if I just saw God, I, I knew exactly what I'd say. Like a pirate. Arr. Right? And then you just, you, you, you read what the Master says to Job, and he's like, where were you? When I did all this, what are your qualifications? Yeah. You call yourself a master. You think you know everything. You're complaining to me like I'm not doing my job right. No, he is the master of masters. You better watch out. Now go to John 15. This is the biggest blessing right here. What does this master do? You know, this master of masters, the most high God, omnipotent, powerful, the terrible God, you know what he does? John chapter 15, verse 14. Fifth, John chapter 15, verse 14, it says, yeah. Ye are my friends, Amen. if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, the difficult things, the wonderful things, the mighty things of God. What does he say? I have made known unto you. 
God, but I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or hell. Only, 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 you're only going to know once you die. Guess what? God's like, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. He's, this master of masters makes things known to you. Go ahead and close it off here. Psalms chapter 35, verse 23. Psalms chapter 35, verse 23. You'll notice, go ahead and read that. It says, Psalms chapter 35, verse 23, and it says, Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even to my, unto my cause, my God and my Lord. You know, when you're praying to God, you're not just praying to, to, to the name of God just like that. You're praying to so much more. You're praying to so much more than you honestly think. Oh God, I don't know what you've done for me. I don't know what to be thankful for. Know who he is, and, 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 and that will help you be thankful, I'm telling you. My God and my Lord, my God, my King, my all in all, my shepherd, my master. But he's also my Lord too, my giver, my provider, my counselor, my savior. He is a God of many names, and all of them are him. Now, Proverbs 22, verse 1, it says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. You know, when you leave this study... You're going to go home, and you're going to think, oh, you know, what is Ralph? I'm not a preacher. I'm not a soul winner. I'm not a blessing to anybody. But guess what? Throw that out of the window. You know why? Because a good name is rather to be chosen. Stop choosing your own name and choose the name of God. Choose his name. Do things for his name. Every name of God is given, and it was given for your sake to glorify him. Psalms, oh, go, to it. go over there. Psalms 23. Why was righteousness given to you? Why was righteousness, Psalms 23, why was the righteousness of God given unto Joseph? Why did he pray this? Psalms 23, we'll close it here. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. A good name is rather to be chosen. Do it for him. Amen. Pray for him. Be a blessing for him. Obey your, uh, obey your husband. Uh, be a blessing to your wife for his sake. Amen. Otherwise, you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you idolater. <laughs> Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, God, that we could just know a little bit more about your name, Father. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, Lord God, for uh, just really, Father, for, for allowing everyone here to be patient enough, Lord God, to go through these with me, Lord. And I thank you for going through this with me. I pray, Jesus Christ. That as we go home, Lord God, that we'd really uh, praise you for who you are even just a little bit more and more specific, Father. We walk closer to you. We glorify you even more. And I pray, Jesus Christ, you'd even get some greater glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.